Hi, Alex Roccatelli here, Forage Systems Extension Specialist at Oklahoma State University. Let's talk today about sorghum halopens, commonly known as Johnson grass. Here in Oklahoma, Johnson grass will grow from April to October. It can resume growth from dormant rhizomes when the soil temperature is around 60 Fahrenheit or it can start to grow from seed germination when the soil temperature reaches 70 Fahrenheit. After three weeks of vegetative stage, it will start to produce new rhizomes. After six weeks, it will flower and after nine weeks, the plant will have viable seeds. Therefore, we can have even three cycles of Johnson grass in one single season. Also, Johnson grass can be in a wide range of soils, is adapted to a wide range of soils. However, it cannot tolerate waterlogged and saline soils. Before end management, make sure that what you have in your pasture is Johnson grass. If you are looking at the seedling, the seedling will look like a corn seedling, but the seedling will be completely hairless and you have a white vein in the leaf that's pretty much different from corn and sorghum. Now when you look to an adult plant, first thing, you are going to have several stems coming from one single plant. Sorghum and corn, most of the time, they will have just one stem coming up. Now, the leaves will still hold, we still have that white mid van as the seedling. If all those clues are not enough, you can look here in a very thick thing. You need to look at the color of the plant. That's exactly where the sheath will meet with the blade. Right here in the color, you will see that there are little hairs. That's pretty characteristic from Johnson grass. Now, if you dig a Johnson grass plant, you will see that this plant contains rhizomes, not only roots. Other grasses that look like Johnson grass, most of the time, they won't have the rhizomes. Finally, if the plant around the launch the head, the head will have a pyramidal shape, one feet to one feet and a half height and the branch will be pretty much parallel to the soil. If you have pastures infested by Johnson grass, as you can see here, you still can graze it. Remember, Johnson grass was first introduced in the US as a forage option. Johnson grass holds a very good quality actually, 15% crude protein and 60% total digestible nutrients and sometimes can be even better than Bermuda grass. Also, cattle prefer Johnson grass over Bermuda grass and other grasses. You graze Johnson grass first and after other grasses. If you want to graze Johnson grass and keep it, they stand over ears in your pasture, I would tell start grazing when the plant reaches 18 inches and stop grazing when the plant reaches about 6 inches. Don't go lower than that because the growing points of Johnson grass is about 4 or 5 inches and if you remove those growing points, the plant needs to start to regrow slowly from the rhizomes. This will take time and also this will starve the rhizomes and with time the stand will thin out in your pasture. Also, you can produce hay from Johnson grass. Follow the same idea. Cut when you have 18 inches to a height of 6 inches. In this way, you can have up to 3 cuttings during the season. Now, most of the time, people prefer to control Johnson grass. For two reasons. First, Johnson grass can be poisonous for animal. This happens when Johnson grass accumulate nitrates and prussic acid. The accumulation happens when 
the plant is staying in a drought period followed by a rain. Therefore, if you have a rain after a period of drought, wait at least five days before you introduce animals or cutting for hay. For Johnson grass control, first be proactive. Avoid that this plant just infest all your area. Just use certified seed that's weed free. Also, control Johnson grass in other areas, in fences and also in ditches. Avoid passing the machinery through Johnson grass stands. Drive around. And finally, when you are moving from an infested area, to the next, clean your machine to avoid seed and rhizomes propagation. Now, if your area is already infested by Johnson grass, I would tell the best alternative is mowing or grazing. If you keep mowing and grazing to the ground, you are going to starve the rhizomes and those plants will disappear with time. Plowing is another alternative. When you plow during fall, especially, you are going to expose the rhizomes to killing temperatures. Now, when you talk about disking, pay attention. Disk might be a bad alternative, because when you disk and you cut the rhizomes, more plants will come from these pieces of rhizomes. But, if you disk and right after you apply a correct herbicide, you can increase the efficiency of the chemical control due to the cuts that you make in the rhizomes that you expose to the herbicide. For more information on Johnson grass, herbicide control, prussic acid and nitrates, please check the links below in the description of this video. Thank you for watching.